And um, hey, Samantha. Yay. I will unmute you too, um, Samantha. Just message me. And I know you've got some questions too. So uh, I definitely would love for you to participate. Let Candace know as well. If she's available, then um, I will also unmute her. So, okay, let's do this. We're recording. Guys, this is Amanda Pruitt. She's an ambassador diamond, top 25 income earner for 2016. And uh, I had the privilege of meeting her on a boat. We were having an ambassador celebration dinner cruise. And that was our very first time really getting to meet um, Mark and Cindy Pentecost, Pam Souter, Mike Patillo. And uh, Amanda and I promoted to Ambassador on the same month. Okay, just within like a day or two of each other. And so anyways, like our, our friendship began a couple of years ago. And I have just fallen in love with her and her husband and her family. They're an amazing, amazing family. And I know that you guys are going to learn a lot. So make sure that you get pen and paper or your phone, type notes out. Um, this girl, when it turned on, like she exploded her business. And I'm so excited that she's going to share it for herself. Okay, so you guys are really going to get to hear from her. But um, I'm excited. I can't wait. All right, so here we go. All right, Amanda, I've given you your intro. Take it away. Share with us your story and tell us how you got into this business, what it was like, like before, what is life like now go for it. Okay. Well, first of all, y'all have to love me for my hot mess expressness. Y'all have a gorgeous uh, leader. Rachel's always looking great with her hair and her makeup, but I just did a peel. So I'm like extra shiny and I put on some lip gloss for y'all, but that's all you get. So, um, all right. So let's see, it's been three years and two months. So three years, just over three years ago, I was a police officer and I was home on maternity leave. I know, yes, I was a cop. People are always like, are you sure? I'm pretty sure the police academy kicked my tail, but I did it. Uh, so I was home with an eight month old and a two year old. And, um, my husband was a firefighter. So they worked 24 hour shifts. I don't know if it's like that everywhere, but he was gone for 24 hours at a time. And I was on an unpaid leave because I hadn't been on long enough to have, you know, time built up. So basically on paper, um, I just found my budget the other day. We had about uh, $2,300 in bills every month. And Michael was bringing home $2,000 a month. So on paper, we, that does not include gas, groceries. And the only reason we were able to pay our bills was because it kind of fell between pay periods. You know, I, I don't even know how it happened, but um, that was kind of our life. I was an extreme couponer, like crazy, crazy extreme. Like I could have been on the show. I mean, I would, the, the, the cashiers knew me. I had like a thousand rolls of toilet paper in my garage. And it was just kind of a running joke in the family. And I joked on myself. But what people didn't know is that if I wasn't doing that, we wouldn't have had food on the table. You know, like that was what I had to do. I had to come home with 30 things of air freshener so that I would get an extra $10 overage to be able to buy meat for dinner. So that was kind of our reality, you know, when three years ago, so December of 2013, so almost four years ago. So anyway, I, I needed a way out and I kind of weighed the pros and cons. If I went back to work as a police officer, it was going to cost me an entire paycheck to put my two little kids in daycare. So I was going to work just to pay daycare plus insurance and all of that. Or I needed to find a way to make just $500 a month so that we could pay for the van that we had to get since we had our second child. So, you know, I looked at everything. I loved couponing. So I looked at getting a part-time job at a grocery store, at Target, like anywhere I could. And it just, it didn't make sense. And it wasn't going to make the money I needed it to make and work with my husband's schedule. So, you know, I had seen network marketing and I'm like, I'm not a salesperson. These people drive me nuts. I mean, I worked in retail for like 30 minutes when I was 16 and I quit. So it was just not, not something I ever thought I would do. Well, um, you guys might know Kim Texton. She's an ambassador diamond. We went to high school together. Um, we were in youth group together, went to church together. Um, she is my polar opposite when it comes to personalities. I know Rachel says she's, she's red, but I'm still convinced she's very sweet and yellow. And, um, so anyway, Kim is very green. If you know, are familiar with the, the colors, um, very, very introverted, always been that way. Uh, so anyway, I saw her posting on Facebook, these belly pictures. And remember I was a cop at home. And I'm like, oh my gosh, get off my Facebook with these belly stickers and just go to the gym. And, you know, I was, I had to be, I'm very, I'm a skinny person. Okay. So for me to be a cop, I was in the gym, I was lifting weights and it was almost like how your skeptics might feel like, oh my gosh, like, why are you lying to these people? There's no way those things work. So that was my, that's what I thought. Well, I knew Kim, I trusted her. 
I mean, we weren't like best friends. We were at the time, I, I would say more like social mention of each other. So we just kind of liked and commented on our kids' pictures. And I never, ever, ever, ever liked or commented on her business posts or her belly pictures. And, and I'll never forget, she went diamond and got a $10,000 bonus and she posted about it. And that was kind of the moment where I was like, for real? And then she quit her job and she was a general manager of a hotel with a master's degree. She was like 26 years old. That was a huge deal. And in my mind, I'm like, dang, she went to school a long time. That was a really good job. And she quit it to sell skinny wraps. So anyway, that was kind of my thought process. So I messaged her one day and I, I literally said this, Hey, so I'm sure those wrap things don't work, but can you teach me how to make $500 a month? I don't know what I got to say to people, but can you teach me? That was kind of the place I was at. I reached right out to her. She never messaged me just because she was posting and she was consistent. And um, I didn't know at the time, but Rachel, you'll have to take a note to share Kim's video about going through the mud. Because I have shared I that one. Um, I did not know that Kim was actually in the worst spot in her business than she'd ever been. She was a presidential diamond. She's very public with this. She wasn't maintaining her rank. It was fourth quarter. Um, her husband had been gone, you know, with the military for like nine months. And here I am. I just pop up in her inbox like, hey, I want to sign up. But the one thing that she never stopped doing was she never stopped posting. And, you know, as someone watching, I had no idea that her business wasn't booming and exploding, right? Mm. So anyway, I join her. And this is the part where I want you guys to really listen because, you know, I had all these great plans. I'm like, yes, I'm going to make $500 a month. I'm going to do all these things. And I sign up. And then guess what happened? I did absolutely nothing for two months. Why? Okay, well then I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? All my cop friends are gonna make fun of me. I can't post about this. No one's gonna wanna buy anything. Now I have to like be some salesman and go door to door. What I didn't do was my training. I didn't plug into her team page. Um, I just, I don't know. I thought money was just gonna start raining from the sky. I'm not really sure what I thought. But um, I remember I, had, I did my launch party. I did do that much, my first 30 days. And I did sign up a distributor and I did sign up for customers. Okay. But my customers were like my mom, my husband's mom, people I basically forced into it. Right. So, um, right around the two month mark, I said to my husband, look, I I'm quitting. I just can't do that. And so he said to me, well, you know, you're going to have to go back to work then. So instantly it was, Oh, okay. Well, I've got to make this work and make $500 or I have to go back to work as a cop put my life on the line, not be home for my babies. I was breastfeeding. So I was like, okay, well, I can't do that because I can't pump with the bulletproof vest and all these things, right? So he was like, why are you going to quit? You haven't even started. I'm like, oh man, well, okay. Uh, so what happened was my enroller, she did a new distributor training webinar. It was like an hour long of like the basics. I actually have a video of my YouTube on my YouTube channel right now called new distributor training kind of genius, right? And it's the exact same PowerPoint presentation that Kim used for hers. So I just made that recently. Um, and we listened to it on speakerphone together, my husband and I. And he was like, who is this girl again? Because he didn't, we didn't go to high school together. And he was like, man, she's so passionate. Why can't you do that? And it was in that moment where I was like, why can't I? You know, I, I love Kim. I know her, but she's nothing special. I'm no different than her. Like if she can rock this, she was presidential diamond. Why can't I do this? And he asked me, why do you want to quit? And I said, because I don't understand it. I am a very, very, very red personality. And I didn't want to read anything. Okay, I don't, I wanted to learn by videos. And my enroller is not a video person. She's got some videos now because I've convinced her and made her make them. But that's how I learn. So Michael was like, I'm sure there's YouTube videos. And I'm like, well, probably, but I haven't looked. So anyway, long story short, I hand them the compensation plan and said, this is what I don't get. There's these chart things and I don't understand. And I don't know how to make money and reds. That's what we care about. I want to make money. He read it, you guys, in like 10 minutes. And he looks at me and says, go sign me up. We're going to do this together. Mind you, I'm like, I just told you I'm quitting. What do you mean sign you up? That's another $100. And he's like, you don't understand. I know you don't understand this. And he, he's very kind. He wasn't being mean. He's like, but this makes sense to me. He's a numbers guy. He's very green. He's like, you don't understand. Like we can make a lot of money with this. So you go talk to people, you go watch some videos and you let me handle this part, like the charting and the compensation and all of that. That weekend I sat down on YouTube and I watched hours and hours and hours of videos, which is why now I have a YouTube channel full of videos because there's someone out there like me. I watched videos from 
um, Chantal Lyons and Sarah Rankin and all these people who had these videos out there, right? And that weekend, you guys, I signed up three distributors. And by the end of that month, I went executive. Next month, I went Ruby. The next month, I went double diamond. Two, two months after that, go. Does everyone's journey happen like that? No, definitely not. You know, it was back in 2015, things were a little different. Um, but I just think my story is kind of, you, know, you might have people on your team right now that are the future ambassadors in your downline. And they just, something has to happen. And what I try to tell my team is there is nothing that you can say or do that's going to make someone work their business. Because I left out this part. I wrote Kim before her new distributor training and I said, I know I'm really sorry, but I just don't think this is going to work out for me. I, I wasn't a kidnapper. I didn't just ignore her. I did go to her and say, I, this isn't for me. I think I'm going to quit. You know what she said to me? Okay. That's what she said to me. There was no, oh my gosh, please don't quit. Let's work together. And that's really important because there was nothing she was going to say. I, something had to happen. You know, I had, I had to be faced with go back to work, go back to being a cop. And the same thing for your potentials. Something has to happen in their life for them to just, it's like a light bulb that has to go on for them, you know, and it's usually not, not necessarily a tragedy, but they're not going to be able to pay a bill or they're going to have to go back to work or, you know, they're not going to have any food in the fridge. Like something has to happen for them to, to just run. So that's kind of my story in a nutshell. And, and now here I am. <laughs> I love it. You know, you froze when you were sharing how after you went Ruby in six weeks. Oh, and uh, I, so we, I didn't hear like what your timeline was. Okay. So I, the month that we went all in was February, um, February 15th, actually, because we went out for Valentine's and day. When did you join before that? December. I had joined okay. in December. So a few months you were on board, not doing yeah. much. Um, so February I went Ruby uh, or executive March. I was Ruby. The first week of April, I went to a green carpet when they used to have them three times a year as a Ruby. And that was kind of a, a, another like amazing aha moment for me because I sat up way in the bleachers and I kind of thought at that point, like, okay, maybe I can make the $500 a month. This is going to happen. But as far as like ambassador, I'm like, those are just rich girls that must've had money beforehand. Like that's really what I thought, even though I was on board with the business, but leaving there, I'm like, dang, they're just like me. And I went home that month from Ruby and went to double diamond. My husband went diamond that he was my diamond for my double. And then two months later I went triple and then nine months or five months later I went presidential and then I was ambassador the next March. So 13 months after we decided to start working. That is awesome. Ah, I love your story. So <laughs> fun. Okay. So tell me a little bit about your building process. You didn't, did you build through a warm market or cold or both? So when I joined, when I finally decided to make a post, I literally had haters upon haters upon haters. And thankfully my personality, I could care less. I'm like, you know what? You're not paying my bills. Delete, 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 block, block, block. So I found out pretty quickly. Don't that you guys wish that we could have a little bit of Amanda in us? <laughs> I would say that we're, I'm not as red as I. Well, I, I think <laughs> some of that does come from being a cop. I will say I'm also just very red, but some of it does come from, you know, having to just have that wall up. Right. Um, because I, I literally would say to people, are you going to pay my bills? Because I'll stop posting on Facebook if you want to pay my bills. So, um, so no, the answer is no, I did not have a warm market. Um, my own mom, who's like my best friend, my biggest supporter in my whole life, she called me up and was like, can you please make a new Facebook so I can just see my grandkids again? Like she did. <laughs> and I'm like, mom, no. And then that same mom Every time I'm over her house, oh my gosh, Amanda, put your phone down. Get off your phone. Why are you always working? And I had to remind her, mom, I could be working in my cop car and, and be gone for 12 hours at a time, you know, but give me a year. I just kept telling my mom, give me a year, mom, give me, give me a year. So for that year, I literally missed bedtime, bath time, all of that. So anyway, back to how I built. I had no warm market, okay? Even my, my closest friends, my closest family, they all thought I was off my rocker. People actually wrote me and asked if my Facebook got hacked. I mean, it was that bad. So <laughs> I remembered when I wrote Kim about joining, I said, look, I don't think I'm gonna have anybody that's interested. Is there any other options? And she said, well, I know there's this thing called Instagram. Like nobody was using Instagram. She's like, there's this thing called Instagram and I don't know, maybe you can figure that out. So. 
back then there was no Instagram training. So I do have a degree in marketing. I know I was a cop. I have a degree in marketing anyway. So I'm like, I can figure this out. So I did not have an Instagram account at all. So I had zero followers and that's what I did. I figured out Instagram with, with no training. I just did it. And so my first full month in the business, I signed 17 distributors from Instagram Woo! that March. So we started working in the middle of February and in March, I signed 17 people. And that first weekend I talked about where I signed three people, they were all from Instagram. Um, and so then I hustled and hurried up, signed up my husband. What were you doing on Instagram? Like, were you, I mean, I mean, okay, let me just tell you, I was on Instagram the same time you were posting the exact same things that I was on Facebook. I was posting three times a day but I never got a message from anyone and I still don't to this day. So there's definitely something that I'm not doing that other people do on Instagram to grow. Well, I will tell you that thing that was 2014. Okay. Things in 2014 are, are not the same as they are now. Now that's not to say I signed up three distributors from Instagram this month. Okay. So I'm not signing as that's many. Awesome. Um, because you know, unfortunately the spammers, the, the cold messaging, I can tell you guys that I built my business about 80% from Instagram to ambassador, totally different now. Now I do way more parties and we can get there. But anyway, in the beginning and to this day, I have never once messaged somebody on Instagram who did not initiate a message or conversation with me first. Um, that's just not how I train. And the, the way that I do Instagram is the way I would want someone to treat me on Instagram. So I wouldn't want someone up in my inbox because, and listen, if you guys follow any other leaders and they teach this, I'm not bashing anybody. What works for I don't teach person. anything on Instagram because I don't know it. So, okay. <laughs> you know I mean, like you're, you're literally talking to a lot of newbies probably to Instagram. So you could okay. definitely teach us some basics to just help us, okay. help us learn from you. So, um, I am a huge, I never, ever, ever, if somebody likes a picture, I'm not going to be up in their inbox. Hey love, thanks for liking my post. Do you want to buy my greens? That is not how I train whatsoever. Um, because if I like someone's picture, I'm just, I like your picture. Maybe you, I think your outfit's cute or your whatever. So for me, this is how I viewed Instagram. I thought about my Instagram as my commercial. Okay. Um, maybe this comes from my marketing background, but you, I don't allow distributors to follow me, not even my own team, um, because what I post, Rachel cannot post. We're not the same person. Uh, so I think this is a, where a lot of people fail, not even on just Instagram, but also Facebook. They start following other leaders and they want to post what they post. But here's the thing. I am crazy, couponing, cloth diapering, breastfeeding Amanda, and that's what you get. I'm not going to do my hair for you. I'm not going to put all kinds of filters and get rid of my bags because that's just not me. Now, other leaders are successful, but every single one of their pictures are beautiful and that's just part of their commercial. So for me, I still post on Instagram the same way today that I did four years ago, three years ago. So what did that look like? Okay. So whatever makes you, you, that's what you have to figure out first before you can even start working Instagram. What sets you apart? What makes Amanda, Amanda? Well, I just told you my list. Um, we, we live in Orlando. We go to Disney all the time. I'm, I, my daughter is almost potty trained, but we, we use cloth diapers. We, I breastfed, which isn't like a, everyone doesn't do that. Um, what else? Couponing. That's a big deal. I mean, that's a huge market in itself. So you've got to figure out what you're doing. It doesn't have to be mom. People, well, I'm not a mom. Okay. Well, do you have a dog? Well, what kind of dog? Do you like wine? Are you a runner? So you've got to figure out what it is that sets you apart from other people or what it is that is going to make you have common interests. So for example, let me give you an example. I would post a picture of my little girl wearing uh, a bum genius diaper. That's a brand of, of cloth diapers that, and if anyone likes bum genius, they would immediately recognize that's what she's wearing. Okay. And I would go to bum geniuses Instagram page and I would start following all the people who follow bum genius. Why? Because when they go to my profile, the people that I follow to determine, you have about five seconds for someone to determine if they're going to follow you back or not. Just like on a commercial, you, that's going to hold your attention for just a few seconds. Are you going to ever buy that product? Does it interest you? So when they look at my page, I want them to immediately see, oh, she likes Bum Genius. Awesome. We have something in common. Cool. I'm going to follow her. And then eventually, they're going to start to see my It Works posts. So whatever, it, whatever I have focused on that day, that's what I'm going to work on following for an, another example. Maybe that it, you lost you. Okay. This is a public or private. So, so in 2014, you your profile or what? 
things have changed. Um, I used to always be on public, but not anymore um, because of all the spammers and people don't, no longer trust it works people. A lot of things have changed. We train to be on private now mm -hmm. uh, so that you can kind of, it's kind of the element of surprise. I have tested this so many times the last couple years, um, but people are more apt to follow you if you're set on private because they want to see who you are mm -hmm. versus if you just let them scan your page and maybe it's a day you posted about BOGO too many times, they're going to just immediately be hit with all that it works stuff. They're not going to want to follow you. Uh, and then unfortunately you have to think of things like other distributors are going to steal your potential. Can I just say too, and plug in this for one second, because Candace, like on our team actually got a message from somebody who's not in it works, but like was really turned off because you know, she was like, I get like 10 friend requests and they're all from it works people. And then they private message me right away and they spam me with all this stuff. And she was like, and I'm not against like you posting and sharing your stuff. She's like, I think it's great. And it does expand your business. But she was like, for me to get all these random people that I don't even no, and then they're messaging me like wanting me to join their weight loss system I'm like come on I'm not I'm like I'm fit you know and I just like made me kind of sad and like what you're saying I just completely agree with and want to affirm that what you're sharing is right on target with what I feel like our team should be doing and that's building relationship with people yes. and connecting with people who are like you so you keep going I just had to say it, but yes a hundred I will I would never ever 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 message somebody just to be like oh hey especially if they're just now following me it's like dating someone right you have got to build upon that relationship like absolutely so that's what I was doing. Uh, and the thing with Instagram, this is what I'm going to say. If you cannot commit to posting six to eight times a day on Instagram, it is not worth your time to even try. And I'm just being honest because I don't want every you to waste day? time. Six every to eight day. times a day, every single day. Because, every, you know, you got to remember Instagram is a fast going thing. If they're following 500 people and you're only posting once a day, there's a very, very small chance that they're going to see that one post you make and you want them to start seeing your stuff, right? So I kind of post about every two hours, but I am not one of those people that sets alarms. Okay, remember I'm not organized, I'm the most unorganized person ever. It just has kind of become habit. Um, there are programs out there that can post for you if you, have, if you work full time, or um, one thing that my team does if you have an iPhone. I heard it might work on Android. I'm not a techie at all, which is funny because I grow up on social media, but you can go ahead and pre-plan your posts and use airplane mode. And then if you work full time, okay, well you can go to the bathroom. Everyone has to pee, right? And you can just touch the one post to post for you. So there are options if you do work full time, but you know, if you, if you cannot commit to that, maybe Instagram's not your deal and that's okay. I have a presidential diamond on my team who has never, ever, ever signed anyone from Instagram. It's just not her thing. Um, Me. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it's just, so what I, what I want to say too, is if what you're doing right now is working, if you're completing your step to success, we're in the middle of a boom season. Now is not the time to be going and, and experimenting with Instagram, unless maybe you stay home, you have the extra time. Um, but or you already have a market for it. If you've, if you've got Instagram and you've got a lot of followers, then yeah, use it. Yeah. Um, but uh, I what I will though that like what you were saying, Amanda too, is that it has hurt our businesses with the amount of spamming people have done. Like yes. oh, people a thousand are percent. what we're doing and it's actually harder for us to be able to grow. So build relationships because just signing up three people, like Amanda said, she signed three people from Instagram. I don't know how many shows she signed for the whole month, but those three, if they're valuable, could become ambassadors versus signing 10 people who don't do anything. So building relationships are so important. And there are still people out there that don't care about the integrity of our business and that they're affecting all these other people. And they are continuing to message 300 people a day in hopes that they're going to sign up two people. Like, first of all, that's just a waste of your time, you know, and I don't know, I'm a huge, huge advocate. And if I, you know, if I ever find out someone on my team is just messaging people, spamming, they're going to get an earful from me because they're, they're hurting my paycheck too, you know? Um, and people don't want to be spammed and you know, it's just, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. So anyway, uh, that somebody wanted to ask you how many followers do you recommend having? Okay. Before so you really in, start to gain that interest and intrigue from people. If you are not actively working your Instagram, you've got to go through and do what I call an Instagram overhaul. And it's a royal pain in the tush. I do it about three times a year and you have to literally go through your followers and click on each one. And the only way to kick someone from following you is to block them. But if you're a yellow, just listen to me for a second. 
Instagram is business. If you have an Instagram, it is a business. It's not personal. So if you're blocking someone, you're not saying, oh my God, I hate you. It's just, you're not a potential. Okay. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't have stores. You shouldn't have, who's your market? That's what you have to remember. Go, going back to your commercial. Sometimes I feel like I'm preaching. So I'm so passionate about Instagram. Okay, do it. Um, you can preach. We like that. <laughs> so your commercial. Okay. Once you figure out who am I, what am I going to post about? That's your followers. So for me, it's not men. Okay. Maybe there's some crunchy men out there that you help using cloth diapers. My husband is one of them. That's not my market. So I don't need men following me. So if there's any men following me, I'm going to give them the boot. This is another reason why it's great to be on private is because you can basically, what's the word? Scan. Control. Kind of get, yeah. Control who's following you. Um, because you can scroll their page. Mm -hmm. So it's absolutely quality over quantity. Absolutely. I have girls on my team who they were so focused on following people before now you're, it maxes you out at like 7,500 people you can follow or I don't know, something like that. But I have girls that have like seven, 8,000 followers and they've never signed anybody. They think it's about having, it's not, it's not about having me personally. I do not want over 3000 followers. I don't. And when I start getting close to that number, I do another overhaul and get rid of people. Hmm. Um, here's why I have kind of found that my sweet spot is about 2000 followers. Why? Because I'm just a normal mom and I don't want people to go to my page and think like, Oh, she's got 10,000 followers. What's so special about her? Oh, she must just be trying to sell me something. Uh, so it's not about your, your, your quantity. And listen, um, I was able to go from zero because remember I didn't have an Instagram to a thousand followers. I did that in like three weeks. Uh, so people that tell me I'm wow. working my, you can follow 200 people like every three minutes or something crazy like that. Now, if you have a brand new account, don't test the waters because they will put you in Instagram jail for a day. Uh, but like right now at my level, I've got a lot going on. I am not hundred percent focused on Instagram. Like I have been in the past. So I don't follow people every day. Okay. Um, I work, I might follow people once a week and then I really, really work on building those relationships with people liking, commenting. It's all about engagement. Instagram went to the same thing that Facebook is and your pictures are not going to show up in people's newsfeed on Instagram. If you are not someone that Instagram finds interesting. And that means, are you someone that people are liking? Are people commenting on your posts? Are people liking it? Uh, so the key too, is you want to make sure that you have followers that are active. So when I'm doing an overhaul, if I click on Rachel's page and Rachel's last picture was posted 12 weeks ago, she's getting the boot. Because she's not going to see my pictures if she's only logging on once a day. I don't care how beautiful her pictures were. So my followers are kind of an ever flowing, you know, people are getting the boot and getting new followers. You know, I'm always staying around that 2000 number. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, and what I say isn't law. That's just what's kind of worked for me. Um, but you've, you've got to stick with the posting, you know, like, even if when do you reach out, like, when do you like send a message to someone and say, Hey, I think like this, say you genuinely think that there would be somebody amazing for your team. When do you do that? So I always, I, I will never message somebody with a business or with a product It's always going to be about something else. So I will, if, if I've noticed that some, there are apps that might tell you who's liking more of your pictures or whatever, um, I will go to their page and, and, look at and see what's, what's going on with them. So what's a good example. Maybe their little girl has on a really cute, like I can tell it's an Etsy shirt or like a homemade something. I will get up in their inbox and, and this is not all the time. I'll inbox them or I'll comment on their picture and tag them and say, Oh my gosh, her shirt is so cute. Where did you get it from? So something that's going to require them to write back to me because now I've got engagement happening. If it's the first interaction, I'm not going to do it in their inbox. I'm going to do it on their page. Um, I mean, so anything where you can have a question, you know, maybe it's a, a food dish. Oh my gosh. Where, what is there a recipe for that? That looks so good. So just like when it goes to talking to your potential customers or distributors on Facebook or wherever, always with a question, uh, because you want to make sure the ball's in their court. Um, so it's different. You know, I have some, of, I will tell you, I have two presidentials. A lot of my personally enrolled diamonds and up I met on Instagram. And it's because we had some sort of connection. So my, one of my presidentials, um, she cloth diapered. That's how we connected. And she started commenting on my cloth diapers. And, I, and so I got in her inbox um, talking about wanting to know her tips on how she washed them. I wasn't going to change how I was washing mine, but I wanted to know how she was washing hers. So that was just kind of an in. And I always will say something like, 
yeah, I mean, I'm so glad I'm able to be home full time now because I wouldn't have time to do the laundry or, you know, you always just kind of like the, the way you should work Instagram should be the same exact way you would work going to a park and sitting next to a mom that you don't know. That is what I want you to visualize. So you sit there next to a mom and our kids are playing like, oh, um, so is this your day off? Um, what do you do for work? Like small talk. It's the same thing. It's dating somebody. And I think a lot of people think it's weird because it's strangers. It is no different than, you know, there's been times I'm on the, the, the aisle at Target buying diapers and there's a mom with this huge stack of coupons. I was that mom. So I might say, oh, is there a good deal on, on uh, stacking coupons this week or something just to start the conversation? It is the same, same idea. So stop thinking so like, yeah, like stop thinking like, oh, we're strangers or whatever. If I didn't do that, I would not be here today. If I didn't just start talking to people. So stop thinking, stop thinking with your business. Start thinking as a friend. And that is absolutely how I grew my Instagram. It was all about, you know, I was a mom home with a two year old and an eight month old and my eight month old decided she wasn't going to nurse anymore. So I was literally attached to a pump for like hours a day. So that's all I would do. I would just sit on Instagram and scroll the feed and comment on people's pictures. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Oh my gosh. Um, where is that? What park is that? Where do you live? Like just small talk. And this is another tip. Um, if you are scrolling your feed on Instagram, and you see something that is offensive to you. I know everyone's offended over something, but for me, I don't like foul language. I don't like um, just, you, if you see something, you know, there's times where you're like, ew, that's gross. You know, like you, you would not be friends with that person. Block them. They're no longer a potential. Why? Because think about your personally enrolled team. Those become your best friends, whether you like it or not, you know? So um, that's what I do. If you're scrolling your feed, you should find, if you're taking my tips and you're following people with common interests, you should find that you're going to start loving your newsfeed on Instagram because it should be things that you are interested in. You know, I don't have my team following me. If I sign a distributor from Instagram, they get the boot too, because I do post the exact same things on Facebook, but, um, I add fluff to Instagram. That's the only way I know how to say it. People on Facebook do not care that I'm eating this fabulous cupcake, but for whatever reason, people on Instagram love cupcakes. Uh, so one other tip, hold on. I saw someone ask a question. Oh yeah. How do you stay organized with the engagement on Instagram? Because y'all know I can have jokes. <laughs> um, I don't, I'm not organized whatsoever. I'm not the right person to answer that other than knowing that if I don't stay organized and I was able to grow to ambassador, you don't have to be organized. Cause I'm not, I'm not organized at all. Um, I kind of will start to remember you people. Just, you post six to eight times a day and you yep. show that you care. You're dating people. It's like, I yep. love the mom at the park. And now, yep. because if you don't know mom, but you want to get to know the mom, you're going to do things and ask questions. It, you have to open a good mind. question asker. And that is what has made you successful. And if people can become good at asking questions and not think about themselves, but think about other people, then they're going to yep. start signing a lot more. You need to become a professional asker and stop thinking, oh, she'd be good on my team. She'd be good on my team. No, like, oh, wow, that's awesome. She uses cloth diapers too. Oh, look, she goes to Disney with her family too. Maybe, you know, I've just started, my kids have started collecting pins, you know, like the lanyards with the little pins. So I'm hunting for other moms that do the same. I actually have a girl, I, I picked up a pin at Disney and I knew that she was looking for that one. I mailed it to her for free. Like we've just become friends. So, um, you know, you've just, if this business is you're also about patient. That's something else that I picked up. You're patient. You'll build relationships with people in order to then eventually sign them. Hopefully if not, oh my gosh. I, it took probably two months, four months, a year. I can, I'm thinking of one of my double diamonds. She, we were followers and active engagers on Facebook for a good year before the business ever came up. I never, I, it just, it was never a right time. Um, I was a friend to her, you know, she needed prayers for stuff and we, I just became a friend and I never wanted her to think like, well, I'm only your friend because I want you to join my team. So just let it be. And here's my biggest tip. I haven't even given you guys my biggest tip. Are you ready? So you've got to get them from Instagram to Facebook. If you can do that, there is an 80% chance that they will join you. Now, whether it's that day, I can't tell you that, but, um, Here's my, now I don't know about Rachel, but my Facebook, maybe it's the cop in me is not set to public. Okay. My posts are not on public. Now I do I make some of them on public. Um, some of them I do set on public if I want people, everyone on public to see it, but 
this random everyday life. It's just set to my friends only. So I want people to know that I'm inviting them into my world on Facebook. So for me, Instagram was kind of like Craigslist. Okay. And when I joined, remember I still was very much cop mentality. I'm like, Oh my God, this person's probably some six year old dude. He's not a mom. He's just pretending. And you know, it kind of weirded me out to post pictures of my kids, but I had to realize this is for my kids. So I had to just get over it. Cause realistically guys, whether you're private, public, whatever, the creepers out there, they can find you if they really want to. Okay. Not trying to scare you, but whatever, that's the reality. So I had to get over that. But when I message people, I will literally say, Hey, I would love to connect with you on Facebook. So you can see I'm really, I'm not some creeper, but that's where I have my real life and my real friends type thing. And that's the other thing. When you're talking to people on Instagram, talk to them like you would your best friend. I use emojis. I use the gifts, you know, um, like if, 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 if I have a potential on Facebook and they're not answering me, I will literally send the cookie monster that's like doing this, you know, like, hello, like I saw your little bubble. Why aren't you answering me? That's just me. That's just Amanda. That's what you get. So I'm not going to pretend to be some, oh, I think you would be a wonderful asset to my team. No, I'm like, girl, you need to do this with me. What are you waiting for? So because. Because what's going to happen for you? It's kind of like you're trying to date this guy and you wear all this makeup and this padded bra and you're like, oh, I'm this hot babe. And then he gets you home and it all comes off and they're like, whoa, you are not the same person. That is what I never, ever, ever, sorry, you never know what you're going to get out of my mouth. I don't ever want to be that person to somebody. So I don't ever want someone to then join me and then I am like completely different. You know, what you see is what you get. I told you guys that in the beginning, okay? I don't even have on mascara for y'all, much less like fakes. No, it just doesn't happen. Um, so anyway, that was a lot of information. I don't know if any of that, y'all wrote down any of that, but it was good. I, I don't even know if I answered your question, but you know. I don't even remember what it was, but it was good. It's <laughs> all been really good. I, I just, I really appreciate your realness. I know that the team is loving this. <laughs> um, you know, I just, I like your mentality with, reach growing relationships and reaching out to people because I truly believe like, you know, with the amount of spamming that we've experienced in this, the last couple of years, which is what I was sharing earlier with like what Candace, what happened to Candace, she's on here right now. Um, and she could probably speak to it, but, uh, you know, just that this girl was like, well, Candace and I were just having this conversation and Samantha that there's probably the reason why we've had a big struggle in the last 365 days is because of the spanning that happened the year before. So yes. we need to get back to real relationships because that will actually grow real people into real positions and they'll actually be, they'll take this business seriously and not just think that they're just signing up for $99, but they're doing it because they want to change their life. And so anyways, like I love what you said. I mean, this has been absolutely gold. Don't you guys think? Just comment there if, if you feel like this has been very valuable to you tonight. Um, Amanda, what are your best coaching tips? Like, okay, so obviously we've heard the field and how you work this business. I know you do it in person. You do it over social media. That's a big part for you. Um, but what, what is it like when it comes to, let's say you're an emerald and you're working towards diamond, you've got some team underneath of you. They're not doing anything. Um, what are you, some of your best, like in the next couple of minutes, just share your best coaching tips for us. Like what's your, how do you coach your team? How do you, what do you do? So my team knows first and foremost, I don't sugarcoat anything. Um, I actually made a post tonight. That was all these excuses and I'm not an excuse person because you know what, when I joined this, I had every excuse why this business wouldn't work for me. You know, my husband was gone 24, 48 hours at a time. I was attached to a pump all the time. I was home alone. I we didn't have gas money. So I was stuck at home feeling like I had no friends because I was the first one out of my little group to have kids. So, you know, being stuck as a mom and feeling like a failure because I wasn't providing for my family. So all these things, I had no warm market. Um, all these reasons why this business shouldn't have worked out for me, but I think far too often people allow the reason that they join to be the reason that they let themselves quit. And it drives me crazy, but you know, they let their why become their excuse end of the day. Now, my biggest tip would be you, you, and I had to learn this the hard way. Okay. Um, people are going to quit and there's nothing that you can do or say that would have changed their mind. And it's nothing that you've done wrong as a leader. And especially if, if any of you guys are a red personality like me, I took that really, really personal when people would never even start 
or not do anything or I thought they were going to be awesome and then they did nothing because I'm the type of leader, like my team knows if it's been like six hours and I haven't posted on my team page, they're like, I mean, are you okay? Like what, you know, they just know I'm very present for my team. I always have been. Um, it's just my personality. And, um, so if someone were to come to me and say, Amanda, I want to go diamonds. Um, what do I need to do? The first thing I would tell them is pull out a diamond chart and I want to know how many boxes you have left. There's 12 left. Okay. Awesome. You need to go out and find 12 distributors. That is the mentality I want my team to have because it's very easy to fall into Oh my gosh, I wish Ashley would go sign one person. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm building her to Ruby and she's not even running her auto. I can't believe she hasn't signed a single person and I've given her two distributors. You can't think like that. And for me and my personality, it's very easy to allow that to happen. I've been there. You know, I, I, I've kind of gone through all these things that I train my team on now because, you know, I, I have a triple diamond, you guys. I'm just going to put it out there. I have a triple diamond that deleted her Facebook six months ago and is still collecting a triple diamond check. But you know what? She was I one of the too. first. I do too. You know, what do you do? She was one of the first people that I signed from Instagram that yeah. very first month she was in at the right place at the right time. She happened to be on my top line and I took the fastest way to the top. You fill yeah. the boxes, you get there and you, and you know what? You need people to promote to get to where you're going. So it's going to happen. And you know what? I had to tell myself, I really hope she needs that money. I am blessing her. It's a blessing to her family. And that's that do this and you keep going. Uh, so, you know, I have got a lot of team this month that has finally, they're, they're regaining their ranks. Okay. We're not going to talk about Armageddon of 2016. If you need to be around, but you know, if you're here, people are right laughing now, that are on here, right now. you know, you're either brand new if you're on here or you're one of those people that are like the people on my team. And I, I imagine it, it's like a hurricane. Okay. We all went through this hurricane, especially fourth quarter. And it was like waves and awful, but we were all in this big boat. And we were holding on for dear life. That is how I think about 2016. And I kept telling my team, just hold on, just keep holding on. And you know what? Those people that held on, that didn't quit and didn't let go, right now they are reaping the rewards. We've made it. We made it through the roughest year that I feel like we're ever going to go through. And it wasn't just at works, okay? Target was down, and I know I was up in Target like every day. So, um, here we are, though. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are. We made it. You know, um, I would say that if you have been in and you are looking at your chart and it's kind of a hot mess, um, I'm, I'm sure Rachel is a charting guru. Um, I have spent a lot it, of time. It's a hot mess, Amanda. It's a hot mess. Yes. Um, I've been working one on one with people because you've got to have a roadmap to get where you're going. And that's what your chart is. Now, you don't have to understand charting, okay? Because I didn't understand charting until I was like triple diamond, you know, but I had a husband and I had an upline who did. So my advice to you would be get with somebody in your upline who understands charting so that they can then send you a picture and say, this is what you need. You need five distributors and a crap ton of volume. Go sign the distributors first. Uh, so I don't know. The, my, my tips are just kind of just get to work. We're paid to do two things, sign customers and sign distributors. That's what we're paid to do. Whether it's going to be through Instagram or doing parties or events, you know what, guys? I'm an ambassador, and I since Thursday night, I have had an online party or an in-person party every single night. Right before I jumped on here, I just did an online launch for one of my new distributors out in some other state. I don't even know. Um, but the people that are at the top are working. We're working. So if you don't put in the work, don't expect to get the paycheck. So that's that's it. That's just it. Just get to work. <laughs> oh my gosh! Thank you so much. I loved even how you commented about the 2016, and I, I think it's just it's a good reminder to anyone that has been in for a couple years uh, that we did get hit hard in 2016, and um, so don't forget that. Like I I don't know who all here is really familiar with the Bible, but uh, Nehemiah is somebody who rebuilt the walls of Israel and. And it took them a long time because the whole wall was destroyed. And so like I've been saying, this is like our year to rebuild the wall like Nehemiah. And um, it took a long time to rebuild it. But when they did, it was stronger, better, bigger than it ever was before. Um, but it took day and night, you know. And so anyways, like I think of that with this year. And I'm like, gosh, if we really put our hands to the plow and we work and we're determined Amanda, they're determined. She's working every night doing online launches and all this stuff. Like imagine what even 2007, like 18 is going to look like because of what we've done in 2017. Like, whoa, you know what I mean? 
And so like it does, it goes in these cycles. And so I'm really excited to be in this year. It's good. And like those of you who are here, those of you who are here on the Zoom, whoa, like I can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next even six months. Like some of you guys are hitting amazing promotions right now, but some of you are working towards that right now. And you're going to see that here in the coming months. And that's really exciting too. So Amanda, thank you so much for coming on. I know that you're not probably done for the night and it's 10, what is that? 10 48 your time. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much for coming on. I know everybody's like so powered up. I've got, uh, like, lots of messages right now going on um that they're all just chatting in group message about how excited they are from your your zoom with us so thank you so much from the bottom of our heart can i pray with us and then uh close this up is that okay yeah. all right god thank you so much uh for this time that we've had just to learn and expand our knowledge in this business i just pray um blessing over amanda god i mean they see an incredible harvest this year Pray that just you'd pour your favor over her and bless her for this time. But God, I also pray for this team who's on here, who's hungry to learn and to grow. I pray that you bless them, that you open the doors, Lord, of just, just rain down your harvest on them, God. And I just pray that they would just see such an incredible growth in their um, ability to lead, but also an incredible growth, Lord, in their, their ability to just enroll customers and change people's lives and enroll distributors and, and touch people, Lord, and help bring them financial freedom. And I pray that we would use this opportunity as a vehicle um, in our lives to reach other people. So uh, thank you, Lord, for this time. And I pray that you just bless it. And may we uh, end tonight strong. Amen. Yay. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Yes, thank you so much. I know everybody's like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. So anyways, we really appreciate it. Can I take a picture really fast, you guys? Sure. Smile into the camera. Okay. Let me do this really fast. All right, here we go. Everyone smile. One, two, three. Yay. We're done. Okay. Thank you. Get back to work. Go. See you later, guys. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.